Hey guys, it's Ryan with Fluid Health. Today showing you how to do a anterior power flexor network uh, stretch. So this is your anterior flexor myofascial network. So you got your ab wall, the rectus abdominis, you got your pecs, some of the lat comes into this as well. Um, and then the psoas or the, the quad muscles and groin, all these guys are flexors. And so what we're really doing is we're trying to isolate the abdominals to stay tensed so that I can open up my pec and my lat as my arm comes overhead without those muscles gripping and dragging the rib with it, externally rotating. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my arm on this ball and I'm using it essentially as a fulcrum to draw my arm out and lean into it so I can get a stretch without buckling into extension of my lumbar. Could you do it on a chair? Sure, a couch, anything really, even a wall, but it's just really efficient with this ball. So I'm gonna show you it on the ball today. So essentially I'm in a quad position, the elbow or the bottom of the humerus is gonna be on that ball and then I'm reaching the arm overhead. You know, as I go there, I don't want there to be pinching in the AC joint, so I'm just gonna bring it up overhead, even maybe at a 45 degree angle away from the center so it doesn't pinch as I bring it across the body. We can work our way up to that, but the idea here is to keep your ribs down so that as you stretch the arm overhead, it doesn't make the rib buckle and make you concave to the opposite side of the body, so this shouldn't expand. We're gonna keep that rib close to the pelvis Turn your head to the opposite side. We're stretching this left side today. You can go out to the side a little bit so it's not so adducted if you feel pinching. And then you're gonna lean into it and draw the arm overhead until you get to that first barrier for stretch resistance. So there should be no pain, no buckling here. And you're just feeling a deep stretch along the lower sheet of your pec major and your lat, some of the rotators here. And again, you're just holding it there passively for about 30 seconds. And then once you're done, you're gonna push down on your elbow and flex these muscles. So you're gonna feel the lower sheet of your pec and your lat flex. You're gonna do that for about three to five seconds by pushing your arm down into the bowl or seat or whatever you're gonna brace on and then relax and then sink back into your hips, making sure that the rib doesn't flare, make sure there's no pinching and see if you can get a little bit deeper into the stretch and deflection. So this is a nice PNF stretch for Again, the power myofascial network, superior segments of that, at least the pec, some of the lat. Once again, you hold it for 30 seconds, then go back in and flex it. Hold it there for three to fives. Again, about 30% of what you can do. Let it amortize for two seconds. Breathe in, sit back into your hips, keep the rib from flaring, and see if you can go into a deeper stretch still. And once again, this is going to help you to elongate both the lower sheet of the pec and the lat so you can get better arm overhead reaching without compromising the lumbar, and dragging the trunk with it, whether that's bringing the arm back because the pec major is going to stretch on the sternum and pull it in the ribs. So if it's stiff, it's going to move the trunk around. It's going to distort your center of gravity and your body's going to have to overreact. So once again, a really awesome stretch and something you should be putting into your program to help with opening up that upper quarter and balance from the regional distortion that we see from the lack of stability from your canister. So again, canister distortion leads to overuse of these muscles. So we have to mediate that, get it back to neutral once we get our canister into a neutral position. Questions on any of that stuff, reach out admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com, but get after it and enjoy it. Remember, we're trying to shoot for 180 degrees of shoulder flexion with no flaring of the rib, no flattening of the lumbar, and especially not into the upper thorax where we see that hyper mobility in the lower back, hypo mobility in the upper segments of the trunk. That's what shows up in the shoulder distortion. That's what we're trying to get our arms around. Let us know if you need help.